I've devoted the last 25 years at Imagine Chicago to creating connections that bridge differences in a way that really regenerates communities and also forms communities that might not otherwise be formed. When I left my job as a banker to start this, my middle daughter, Caroline, who's now a psychologist, said something very wise to me, which became formative in the work we did at Imagine Chicago, which is, she said, Mom, I don't know how this is going to work, but I think one thing that would help it work is that if you have the funnest meetings, then everyone's going to want to come to your meetings instead of the other people's meetings. And so in the early days of Imagine Chicago, I designed every agenda with my six, eight, and 10-year-old children. And really, their job in that was to see whether or not the meeting was sparky enough, fun enough, creative enough that a child would want to be present. And these were meetings focused very much on adults and the future of the city and how to regenerate it in a way that nothing and no one was wasted. So it was a serious topic. But I really appreciated that Caroline said that because it became a hallmark of the work. Now, as a grandmother of five granddaughters, I'm in the ultimate job which uses everything I've learned. And at the heart of that job is being present in a playful way that always has open borders, that bridges generations, that bridges cultures. I have two Chinese grandchildren, granddaughters. And all of this gets brought to bear. I think one of the ways that play really bridges, and I learned this from my now psychologist daughter, Caroline said to me, Mom, I understand now why that was such a good instinct from the beginning. She said, we've discovered now in the research that play is as fundamental a need for people as eating is. And I remember her showing me some years ago a video you've probably seen about the polar bear and the husky mm -hmm. playing together where they really should be hurting each other, but they're not. And you can just see that need for play, and especially in the dog, but also in the bear. But there's also something that in that spirit of play, by definition, the world is open. It's subject to my creative input. You don't know what's going to happen in the next moment. What you do determines what happens not only for you, but for other people. And there's no one judging in the midst of that what can happen, unless it's within, I mean, if you're playing within a set of rules, that's something else, again, playing a sport. But within just free play, then people have this positive affect, which we know positive mood contributes to a lot of things, not only relieving stress, but making it possible to learn. It builds positive relationships and connections because you feel fondly towards people with whom you're playing and who and playfulness is also a kind it's a shape of vulnerability it's a positive edge to vulnerability precisely because people are taking a risk of being together in something that they don't know exactly where it leads but the commitment is to being open together and to being positive together and to having fun together well, to me, all of that is a precondition for doing difficult community work because we have to get people into a frame of mind where they have a positive regard for each other, which goes outside the boundaries of whatever boxes they've been taught as ways of seeing each other and also the task at hand. And play, to me, is a direct do not pass go way of getting at that. I could be more concrete than that, but to me, it's in everything. It's in everything that Imagine Chicago has done.
Yeah, it's an interesting question how people who have experienced play and maybe taken some creative risks that made them happy and feeling differently connected, how they can take that beyond the boundaries of whatever it, that experience or workshop was, which isn't configured the same way. Because taking something from one context into another is can be hard to do. I think one of the answers to that is that in, in the work I do, there's, it's always mission focused, meaning we are always at every moment in the service of what we're there to do together, whatever that is, improve integration of refugees in Sweden or whatever it is. But there are so many ways to do that. And people are really longing to be differently and more appreciatively connected in doing their work together. So when you give them experiences of doing that in ways they're not used to, they notice their own affect, especially because at the end of all of these moments of play, I'll say, what did you notice? What did you notice? What made that possible? You know, what did you learn? And people will take that away. So for instance, one of the things I often do when people are talking about wanting to move. I wish we could, I wish there were a way I could stretch or move. And some people do icebreakers. I don't do icebreakers. But if I've heard that as a cue, where in that case saying, I wish my body were in this more. I wish there was a way to remember this in my body. I'll say, okay. Let's have some fun. Let's just take a couple of minutes right now and do a learning dance. Well, people haven't mostly been to serious work in the municipality where, oh, here we go, another learning dance. They don't know what that is. But I've said it in a spirit which makes it sound like we're about to have fun, not I'm about to embarrass you. So in that case, I might say to them, Okay, so what's something that you learned this morning that seemed important to you? And so people might say, listen more. And, and almost naturally, they'll do an image that goes with it. And if they don't, I might say, listen more. That was something we talked about a lot. What, what would be a way of doing that with your body? And they might say, big, big ears. Okay, so let's all do that together big ears. And then what else did we learn? And people will name something else. Well, people have commented to me years later that the thing they remembered more than anything was that two minutes we took to do the learning dance because it connected all the learning. It reinforced it in their body. But of course, everyone was also laughing. And then if you say, who has a favorite song on your iPod that you're just dying to dance to now that we've learned the dance? It's another open moment, and it doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter whether it's a swing dance or a rap dance or, as it was in Denmark last week, Party Like a Preschooler, which is on my phone, that you, we did it to the ABC song. And it becomes a memorable moment. But people have also learned something important in that moment, which was that we absolutely did the work. But we did it now in a way which is indelibly in their repertory of important things that they and others learned, and that we created as a collective learning vehicle so that the learning became a reinforced for everyone and not only for me. That learning is not a possession, it's a collective experience. So I think the purpose there is not to play for the sake of playing. Let's just all get the sillies out, nothing wrong with that. But it's also to say, can we do this important work in a way which is playful? And because it's playful, will really be carried in our memory as something we enjoy looking back on. And I think just so much serious work feels so heavy, so heavy that people die under the burden of it. 
Whereas when you can do serious work in a very lighthearted way, it doesn't make the work less serious. It just makes us more available for it. It lifts our spirits. The, the question is, is play a thing? Is it a methodology? Is it something you use? Do you use it because it sticks better? I don't know, play is play. I think it represents an openness to doing things in a new way. And it's really, to me, an invitation to share in a world of imagination in which we can take different parts than we normally do. So in the analogy, I in the example I just used about dance, what's new in that moment is that people aren't used to dancing their learning. It's not that dance is new or that learning is new, but dancing in public in ways that are completely original because no one's been in that moment with those particular learnings. So it's all, it all feels brand new. And the invitation is to the group to be together in something brand new. I think play has that feeling that we're being invited into something brand new. And we notice in the process of being invited into that brand new thing that we're also developing a different set of relationships to each other. I've discovered a number of things that I think work after 25 years, but I think the most important thing is the opening moment, which is how you open space for creative engagement and how you signal to people that this is a place you can play around a purpose that matters to you. And there are lots of things on Imagine Chicago's website that give you some tools for doing that. But I, I just wonder what it would be like if every time we walked into a meeting, just imagine, if every meeting you walked into, when you got there, the opening moment of walking in the door, you said, I'm so glad I came before anyone said anything. You know, what would be happening in the room that would make you feel that this was a moment that you were being invited to play around something that really mattered and could make a difference?